So at the end of the last video, what happened was our dang SD card shorted out, okay? We were getting ready to pull this head. Um, basically, got to pull the push rods and then pull the stain pipe out, and then this head came right off, okay? Everything else was already done. There's the one little trick that I didn't wasn't able to catch, okay? But I'm going to show it to you guys going back together as well, okay? So this bolt right here, when you pull that head bolt out, okay, what you want to do is lift it up about an inch and a half, two inches up to where it's almost touching the, the firewall right here, okay? And then zip tight in place. That gets it out of the block so you can pick the head up, okay? Without having to beat a hole in the side of the block or hit it 16 times to get that head out, okay? Don't have to do any of that. You don't have to pull engine mounts. As you can see, they're still mounted. Um, and then you have your teardown complete, okay? Now we're going to walk you through how to pull your engine without pulling the cab. I always like to start with the flywheel bolts, okay? Flywheel to torque converter bolts. Um, I feel like that's the best way to get started on this. So I'm going to do it from underneath. It's my preference, okay? There's two, three places you can really get to these flywheel bolts at. One, you pull the starter, okay? And you can get to the flywheel bolts right there. It's a little tight on that side because of the angle. Two, if you guys look, right down in there you guys see that that plastic or that rubber grommet piece looking thing right there okay um which if you look it's i just touched the flashlight on it okay um you can pop that out and you can get to your flywheel bolts right through there the easiest spot is underneath the engine okay um there's also a rubber grommet underneath the engine which is where i'm going to head next um i'm going to show you guys how to pull that okay um this part right here you can do this by yourself. It is easier to do it with somebody, obviously, because you have to roll the engine over to get to the flywheel bolts, okay? Um, yes, you can grab yourself a half-inch ratchet, 16-millimeter socket, hang it down, and turn the engine over. Go back and then reach between the two to fill the flywheel bolts. Loosen your flywheel bolt, your flywheel nut, and then continue on. We are going to have Adam work the half-inch wrench up here on the front, okay? So... Now I'm going to go underneath the engine. What I'm going to do is show you guys from under here what I was talking about. Alrighty. So here we go. You guys see that right there? That is what we're looking to take out, okay? Obviously this is, obviously this is a little bit easier with, I mean, two hands. <laughs> okay? And I can't really get this camera up here to show you, but we kind of got lucky. So far, the engine is sitting on the first one. Now, on a 6.0, there are six of these bad boys, okay? Um, you're going to roll this engine over, and you're going to get all six over. These are a 14 millimeter. This makes it a little bit easier. Um, one of these handy-dandy snap-on medium sockets. That just makes it a little bit easier, but it's not needed. Um, the medium length socket fits in there absolutely spot on perfect, okay? Uh, deep socket won't fit. Um, a short socket, you know, you kind of got to force it onto there. Uh, but once you get it loose, which I've already done that, you will just spin her out of there and set it off to the side. That's what the nut looks like, okay? Adam, you want to hang that ratchet down here? Oh, thanks. Okay. So make sure that it's snug on the on the harmonic balancer bolts, okay? And then put your fingers in here and turn this engine over until you fill it. Now this is definitely not as easy as having a second person here because I just went too far, I think. Yep, I did. You want to back it up for me? Go ahead. I got Adam up there just giving me a quick hand. This is where having two guys to help definitely helps, okay? Hope this video quality is decent. Anyways, I had my hand right over here. If you guys look, go ahead and hang that back down, Adam. And I had this, I had Adam attach that for me. Now I would have just attached that myself and then done this all on my own. I've done it before. It's not easy, okay? Uh, I've got that one. We're gonna make this pretty quick with having an extra guy up there. It just makes this faster. So get your buddy over and tie him with some a cold beer maybe some pizza give you a hand these are a lock nut so they will be a little tight to come off at first and then they get to finger tight so you can just spin them out all right adam next one i do recommend always going clockwise on a harmonic balancer 
obviously, so you don't loosen anything up that you don't want to loosen up. Just be careful, don't go too, you know, if you're going a little bit fast, just watch your fingers because you can get snugged. A little bit more at them. Okay, right there should be good. Oh, I didn't get a seat of that there. Oh, just a little bit more for me, bud. There you go. If you don't have this in the right spot, the socket won't seat all the way onto the bolt, onto the nut. Go ahead. So we've got three off. And we're looking for the other three. Oh, too far. A little bit too far. You went really fast on that last one, Adam. Right there's good. Right there's good. If he's going fast, you can smash your finger and then it gets a little fun. Then you get to punch him. Next one, Adam. A little bit more. Right there. Okay. Well, that one wasn't loose at all. Or wasn't tight at all. Somebody may have been in here before. It's interesting to find the stories these trucks will tell you. All right, guys, so now we're underneath the truck again, and we're gonna start pulling the bell housing bolts, okay? So we got the one, two, three. There's a fourth one here. Five, six, and then there's seven, eight. I think it's nine total, if I recall correctly. It's eight or nine total, okay? Anyways, these are all 13 millimeter, okay? And obviously this is a little tight under here with a camera on my face. Um, so I'm going to show you pulling just a few of them real quick. And then we're going to cut to the next part, which is going to be pulling these four bolts over here on the motor mounts. Okay. These are a 13 millimeter. I'll let you guys know the exact number when I'm done. But do everything I can to share those with you so you guys know what you're looking for. Um, helps if you put it on loose and mat. Well, that's nice and loose. This transmission's had to have been out at some point. And then we're pulling this one over here. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this very well, but hopefully you can. Okay. Yeah, I could grab my handy dandy electric ratchets and do this a lot faster. Which I'll start using those on the top side. I'm just doing this to show you guys some of the tricks and whatnot. Some places you really can't use them with. Anyways, like I said, when as I'm pulling these, I'm only gonna pull I'm gonna pull all of them at the top two. Okay. There's one on each side on the top, and I'm gonna leave those in place. And the reason being is for safety while I'm doing this stuff, doing the underside, because I'm gonna pull the motor mounts next and then this thing could slide and separate and then crush me. And we're not looking to do that. We're not gonna go that far with taking this apart. Now there's not really that many tech tips to this. Let's just fight your way through it, okay? Um, there's going to be some grime on these, and sometimes there'll be a butt to come out. As I said, there's going to be one here. You'll use extensions to get this one, and the next one up. Um, same thing on this side, okay? So, as you can see, there's a couple right there. There's one up top above that tab, right in that crevice, okay? Um, just use extensions to get them. All pretty easy to get to. So, we've got the bell housing, then we'll have the bell housing bolts and the flywheel to torque converter nuts out. And then we're going to come over here, we're going to get those big big boys right there. It's going to be four on either side. And that should be the majority of what you have to get, if I recall correctly, from underneath. The rest of this we can do from up top. So here we are. We've I've pulled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the bell housing bolts. So there's two left, so there's nine. 
Okay, the last two are the very top two. And like I said, I'm leaving those in place until we're ready, until we've got everything else pulled. Because when I pull these guys next, this thing could shift and it's not gonna just jump out of there. No, obviously. That being said, I don't want anything to come apart while I'm underneath here. So next we're gonna start pulling these guys right here. I know these GoPros have a pretty wide screen. It's a 21 millimeter short socket and this part can take a little bit to get out, but this thing's a lot dirtier than I thought it was gonna be for 100,000 miles on it. It wasn't negative 75 degrees outside. We pull this thing out and pressure wash it, but whatever. Adam, will you hand me a half inch drive extension? Like a, one of the two or three inches? A little extension would go a long ways in some of these spots down here too, guys. That works good on this one. Oh, shoot, dropped the light in my face. Top here, you obviously can't use any extensions. These are a little bit tighter to get to. Just kind of is what it is. Just work your way through it. Now we're gonna get the fourth one on this side. Okay. All four are done on this side now. What I'm gonna do is use the long one to go through guys. And I'm gonna break these ones all three. I'm gonna get a shorter ratchet in here so I can spin this a little easier or a 3 8 ratchet with a 21 on it will work as well, guys. It might be a little dark in the video, guys. I'm trying my best to give you guys the much light as possible. Um, that being said, there's a tricky spot to get to and see with the camera. Anyways, right here, one, two, three, four. Okay. All right, guys. Now we're gonna start working on the finishing up the top end to pull the engine. Now, if you recall this teardown video, we didn't intend to pull the engine. When we found the bad piston, plans changed. So next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish pulling some, some things off of here so we can finish pulling the engine. Pull the power steering pump first, okay? Um, and we're going to just lay it over here on the side. I am going to pull the power steering hose because it is dramatically easier to change this while you have the truck torn down. Um, so I'm the kind of guy that I spend 100, 50 bucks, whatever it is, and get myself a new power steering pump um, and pulley and just put a new one on while I got this apart, okay? So that's gonna drain all the way down in there. Um, 
We're gonna let that drain out. Make sure that I'm catching all that. And then next we're gonna pull the tire string pump. There's three 10 millimeter, well, there's one, two, three down here. We're gonna take this and we're just gonna lay it over here, okay? Because we still have the pressure side over here. That's the supply side of the pump. We still have the pressure side hooked up. I'll disconnect that later when I get ready to change the power steering pump. So there's gonna be one, two, three holding this bad boy in here. Where did I put my pan of bolts at, Adam? Okay, then there's gonna be one here. And one here. I'm gonna break it loose real quick. I'll set this over here for you. Nope, don't drop that in the pan. That would be gross. Man, that's a long bolt. It's a really long bolt. <laughs> Okay, got that out. So now what I'm gonna do is just lay this guy, make sure it's finished draining. Lay this guy right over here. Just out of the way for now. We're gonna pull the belt tensioner so we can get to the harness, the rest of the harness, okay? That's your main engine harness. Down here we have your AC connectors, okay? Your sensor, your compressor, and then you have your crankshaft position sensor down there, okay? So we're gonna pull these, two 10 millimeters right here. Um, pretty straightforward process on this part. We're gonna replace this tensioner because it looks rough anyways. Um, once again, it's one of those things while you're in here, um, like I talked about in the other video, while you're in here, I always tell my customers when they come to us to do as much as they can possibly afford to do because like having to do this on the side of the road, cause you can change it because of that and it takes out a belt. Um, or you hear that, that whistling, that, that bearing shot. Um, that side still seems to be in decent shape. You can replace each individual one, yes. Um, I replaced the tensioner so it's nice and strong and new. Um, it's like 150 bucks, we sell them on our website. Um, so you can get this and it's gonna be an option with the DIY solutions package. Just makes sense to replace that while you're in there. So next, we have this harness right here. And we're gonna unplug this guy. There's that one. Okay, get that out of the way. And back in there. So with this part, this is what I like to do, okay? Uh, yes, you can get underneath and wrestle this bad boy all you want. Um, I don't do that, okay? I usually take and loop this up here just for the time being, out of my way. Um, we're gonna disconnect this bracket right here and the, the main ground right here so you have a ground that goes up to your battery right here and then this ground wire both tie in right here at the bottom of the engine okay we're going to disconnect this right here take those off it also holds the your power wire to your starter your exciter to your starter in place okay so we're going to loosen those bad boys up and then from there we're going to get the engine engine hoist over here and we're going to pick this guy up okay once we pick this up there's a bracket right down here it's hard to see until we get it get it in here, but we're gonna pick this up, okay? And right right down along here, there's a bracket with a 10 millimeter nut on it, okay? It's not easy to get to with this isn't when this is in place, okay? Because it's right up underneath here, um, right underneath this cross member, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick the engine up while it's still in here, and we're going to um, pull that bracket, okay? That'll allow your transmission lines and this entire wiring assembly to stay right where it's at, okay? And then you can continue to pull the engine out. Okay. Usually it makes it a lot easier to pull the AC compressor while you're, before you do that, okay? So, but to get to the AC compressor, it's very tight. So what I like to do is pick it up an inch or two and then pull these bolts because these are very tight to get to. Uh, let okay. me see the 15 millimeter, thank you. So first you got this bracket right here, okay? Take this bracket loose. Then we have the two in one combo of the grounding wires right here. Okay, and when you put this back together, you wanna make sure you don't forget these. Take and just squeeze that bad boy out of the way. 
We're just making room as we go here. I like to thread that back in so I don't forget. Put the nut right back on there so it's out of the way. Now we are going to get set up to pick this engine up. We're gonna get the engine stand over here. We're gonna hook up. Now there are some brackets you can buy online and whatnot. We've never bought them. I'm just using a chain and some 10 millimeter bolts to pick it up. Um, we're also going to support the transmission real quick. Um, and we're gonna pick this bad boy up and continue on. All right, folks, so we're gonna pull the power wire and your exciter wire off of the starter real quick. And then we're also gonna disconnect your um, block heater cord. So just take and break that guy loose. And then this is a 15 millimeter, a 15 or 16, depends on the starter that you have. This is most likely a stock 6.0 starter. So it's a 15 on this one. The 10 millimeter for your exciter. Right there. Oh, that one's got a whole bunch of corrosion on it, so it's gonna fight me on the way out. Okay, so that's out of the way. And then I'm gonna thread this back on there. New starters come with these things, so it doesn't really matter. Right here, this, it's just like pressed into there. Once I get it out, I'll kind of show you. Sometimes you gotta grab yourself a, a screwdriver, but these clips just like, doesn't actually thread on. You just push it on or pull it off just spread these clips out, okay? There's threads on the block heater, but this just comes like that. That's all it does, okay? So we're gonna kind of just lay these down in here because we're gonna leave these in the engine bay when we pull this apart. All righty. All right, folks, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull the last two bell housing bolts, okay? Um, underneath, we've got our transmission support. I'll show you guys that in the next video so you can kind of see how it's all set up, okay? But Back here, I mean, realistically, these are really easy to get to with all this stuff apart, but there's one right here, and then there's one right here. And then this <clears throat> is disconnected from the transmission. Obviously, this is a lot easier to get to in this position versus um, doing this when you're underneath. So that's why I chose to do these up here. Take and put this right here. There's this part coming out now. These ones can get a little corroded, but when they're nice and finger loose, it's nice. Makes it a little bit faster to pull them out, obviously. Now, don't be too worried about making sure you lay these out in a specific orientation, folks. They can really go in only one spot. Um, there's some two short ones, and then the rest are pretty much all the same length. And they can really only go in one spot um, when it comes to the bell housing bolts. So that, that makes it a little bit nicer. Anyways, if you guys can see that, can you see that, Jonathan? Give them a location. There's one there, and there's one right over here. Okay, and so those two are out. Now we're gonna hook up the engine hoist, and then we're gonna pick this bad boy up. Okay, guys, so we took a quick camera break just to set all this up, okay? Jonathan, if you walk over here, let me see this light here. I'm gonna show them underneath real quick on the transmission. Here. Nothing crazy. Remember, you're not trying to pick the transmission up, okay? So we got this two by six right there, pretty straightforward. We're just taking a little bit of load and pressure off. I just lightly put some pressure on there, okay? Right. Let me zoom in here. So what I do now, so there is a plate online you can buy, and it's a great plate. Not, not saying it's not, I just have never bought one. I use 10 millimeter bolts, generally the ones that come out of the oil cooler housing. I crisscross it, and as you can see, pick it up from right there. I put a bolt so it can't go too far forward, okay? This generally is pretty balanced. So next we're gonna take and we're gonna pick this bad boy up and I'm gonna get that um, AC compressor off there and then the main harness and then it'll be ready to come out. Okay, so we're gonna take and I'm gonna have Adam swing this, Adam grab behind there, swing the engine hoist that way just a little bit to swing the engine towards the driver's side. Or not. Okay, that's good. So it's a little dark to see here, but right here we have one, two, and then there's a third bolt, just like on the power steering pump. The two front ones are a 10, the rear is a 13. So we're gonna take that off. That's gonna allow us access to the crankshaft position sensor harness, which we're gonna unplug that, move this harness out of the way. And then we're gonna take the 10 millimeter that's holding this bad boy on 
to the upper well pin. We're gonna loosen that all the way up, okay? And then we'll be able to pull the engine all the way out. Generally, I like to leave that top outer easiest one to get to in place. The reason being is it takes the load off the other two to get them out of there. Um, and then I'll pull that one last so I can use my finger to get these. Now you can get this without pulling, doing all this. You can do this without picking the engine up, just the way that I like to do it. Um, there are a million ways to do this, do this job. You're learning from me. Alrighty, right back there is the 13. I was on the wrong spot. I'm gonna burn part. This one missing it. Whoa. Hold tight. Okay, that's a first. Well, folks, um, I'm not gonna take this off camera because there's supposed to be three bolts in this. I don't know where the third one's at. So somebody's been in here before. There's a 13 millimeter. There's one, two, three. When I pull this off, I'll show you where the third one goes normally. Okay. Uh, it's not there. So I don't, I don't know what happened to it. Um, clearly somebody said we didn't need to put that one back in at one point. They were just looking out for the next guy. That's what they were doing. Most likely they were just too lazy to force it back into there to figure out the way to get it back in there. Okay. That's a first, Adam. <laughs> Alrighty, here's the AC compressor. Now, usually there's a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter. Okay, this is the one that's really hard to get to, but what you can use it, you can get it in while it's in there. Clearly, the guy who did this last time didn't want to put that back on. So now I'm going to pull this off the side of the block, unplug this guy right here. This is your crankshaft position sensor. As you guys can see, this would be a pain in the butt to do with the cab down. That's nice and corroded in there. Will you give me a flathead screwdriver, Adam? In our All In For Life kit, we're going to give the option to replace the cam and crankshaft bearings. This is, a, I mean, crankshaft sensor. This is the crankshaft sensor. This is the camshaft sensor on the on the driver's side, okay? We're gonna give those options to include those, of course, but this is where they go. And as you can see, they're a pain to get to, so why not take them off while you're doing this? Oh man, it's usually not like that. Alrighty. So that's out of the way. All right, so we took a quick second break because I had to look at something. Once again, Somebody else has been in here before. So this, I don't even know if this is the original engine. Who knows? I might go pull it up on Ford and see just because I'm curious, okay? Um, this should be threaded all the way down. This should be attached to that, okay? Um, this is your uh -uh, starter main power, your exciter, your heater cord, block heater cord. Uh, those should be attached to the side of the block. They are not. Somebody did. They put one or two threads on this stud here. And that was it. I guess they were just looking out for me. Mm. Can you hand me a little pry bar real quick, Adam, please? Or like a medium size so I can pop that off. So this bracket usually holds these wires in place and holds the um, transmission lines in place. Pop that guy off, push that back down, and it's out of the way. Now this engine's ready to come out. Um, while we were messing with it, finicling with it, um, it broke free from the transmission pretty easily. So um, now we're just gonna pick it up a little bit more and pull her on out of here. Adam. That's good, buddy. Pull forward a little bit. Okay, go up. Pull it out. Alrighty. We got some stuff in the way to, for filming and whatnot. Okay, so there's the engine. She's out.